It happens every night Every night And I ain't never met a riverboat dealer That could ever be a friend of mine I have not The summer heat never treats me kind It leaves trouble on my mind So I'm bidding farewell Putting in my notice And I'll see you at another time Sick This highway Does not know my name And I don't care No I don't care Head in my way For another place And I got Three good tires And a spare Right to the hook Right here Just a white line gypsy Getting out of Mississippi With just enough gas To keep this Low Budget Live not so live from the low budget live bar and grill here in beautiful southern middle Tennessee. You bunch of low lifers, you bunch of low life and son of a guns. Welcome to the podcast for April the 25th. Hope all of you are doing well out there. And if you're just joining for the first time and you're wondering what a low lifer is, well, that's what the listeners of this <laughs> snotty podcast call themselves. Man, I'm a train wreck. I'm a train wreck, y'all. Um, Recording this on Sunday, of course, like always. Try to, unless I record them early. Y'all know that. Y'all know that. Sometimes the last few have been recorded a little early because I had a lot going on in life, but got home in the middle of the night from Wisconsin in uh, the studio, MPFL Live Studios, and I've been fighting like some sinus. Like if you, if you watch live and you heard me <coughs> in the background, if you heard any of that on live or you're watching live fishing, it was me. I've been like, uh, been messed up all week, man. Just got, uh, drove almost 12 hours, left the studio. As soon as we hit the, hit the red button, it was over with. I jumped in the truck, came back home to the triple threat and the kids because life goes on. Real life begins again. So, uh, such an awesome experience, though. Yet again, I'm grateful to each and every one of you that that tune in, not only to this show, but to MPFL Live. I see the comments, see the messages you send me. Uh, I am honored to get to do that. Uh, it is my favorite thing that I've ever got to do in life around fishing, other than actually catching bass. It is it's amazing. It's a dream job. I, I'm super appreciative that the league lets me be myself and lets me be a part of what they've got going on. I get to work with my brother, Fat Cat Newton, one of my favorite people, James Watson out on the water, Tanner and Travis Lyons, twin visuals there, making everything look so good with their pictures and their videos they they set up, and then the Fix production crew up there in the studio in Wisconsin. Man, we, it, it, we've got a good thing going. Such a great team of people, great group of anglers, and I just, man, I leave every one of those events – even even Cumberland when it's crazy and it's weather shortened and all that, I just leave them so grateful. And uh, the only the only thing I'm not grateful about is I just wish it was you know the studios in Nashville. <laughs> Actually, I, I kid on that because I love Wisconsin. Weather was better this time, and and uh, I love that area up there, Appleton, Wisconsin. If you're from up there, you know what I'm talking about. It's a beautiful part of the world, man. And I I don't mind sitting and uh, doing some windshield time. Some of you may be thinking, why don't you fly? Because the flight schedules up there are just silly, like when you can get in and out. So I like to put it in, uh, you know, it'd take me like seven or eight hours to get there on a flight between layovers, getting to the airport early, blah, blah, blah. So 11 and a half, 12 hours, I put that GMC in the wind, son. Go up there and I'm in my, I'm in control of my own destiny at that point. But yeah, I pulled up, pulled basically in, in a, uh, an all day or into the night running on about three hours sleep, but Got in, got back home safe and sound, and grateful for that. Uh, grateful for the sponsors of the show. As always, got to give a huge shout out to folks like StarTron, Star Bright, down there in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. StarTron kicking ethanol in the teeth and bringing you low budget live and low budget live, not so live, for several, several years now. I think we're in our fifth season, so to speak, of this craziness right here. 
gets the ethanol out of your fuel tank, fights it, kicks it in the teeth. Right now you're seeing these gas prices go crazy. We're hearing, hey, we're going to allow more ethanol to be in the gas. You better, you better keep some, you better just keep it in your pocket. Better just keep it in your pocket. Get to the gas station. Like a superhero right there. Like, go help your neighbor at the pump. You see him about to put that. No! Dump in the Startron right there. Shake it up. Call him a low lifer. You might get punched in the teeth. I'm not sure, but you'll be you'll be doing them a favor. They will realize that when ethanol gums up the works. If they they karate chop you away from putting the ethanol free fuel treatment. See, I about screwed that up. <laughs> It's what happens when I get silly, man. They'll thank you later. That's what I'm getting at, basically, guys. Startron, we appreciate the folks down there in Florida bringing you LBL. Baitworks, more and more and more y'all are using that Baitworks code. I'm getting them emails. I get the comments from you guys, the feedback. I actually, I emailed Baitworks this week to let them know how proud I was to be affiliated with a company that stands by their customer service, that has fast shipping. It, it's awesome. It's awesome. So thanks to you guys out there for using code Duncan-10 at bait-works. That's a code for the low lifers. It gets you a break. Let's them know, hey, we listening. We're paying attention to what this idiot says on the microphone. It shows some support for the show. I really appreciate that. But if you're if you're getting ready for your spring fishing, wherever you live in the country, weather's finally starting to take a turn for the better, thank God. And hopefully we got some most of the cold behind us for the year. I know some of y'all up in the northern parts of the country had freaking snow last week. It was still cold in Tennessee, too. Get you some tackle. Get ready. They got everything that you could need or want on there. And they got, if they don't have it, they got it coming. Baitworks.com, Duncan-10. Pro Guide Batteries. They just joined on uh, MPFL sponsor, the official battery of the MPFL. It's awesome to see companies like Pro Guide supporting the industry. They're sponsoring a lot of anglers. They sponsor podcasts. Now the MPFL as well. They are supporting the sport. Take care of the people that support this industry. You can use code LBL10 to get you some of those new lithium batteries. They're bad to the bone, dude. I can't kill them. I have killed some batteries in my life, okay? I take pride in it almost because a lot of battery companies advertise you can't kill this battery. And I can assure you, you can. I have. And these new lithiums, man, from Pro Guide, along with the 31 AGM, I'm running for a cranking battery. I just don't worry about it anymore. That's not a concern. And I've had so many battery issues. You guys hear me. I'm like a broken record every week talking about this. But I've had a lot of battery issues in my life, a lot of charger issues. Been running the Pro Guides and running the Power Pole Charge for over a year now in the Express, and it's just lights out. It's great. It's great. So ProGuideBatteries.com, LBL10. Get you some. And last but certainly not least, hang on a second, hang on a second, hang the banner, the Bassmaster Classic winning banner right here, Express Boats, Hot Springs, Arkansas, high performance aluminum bass boat, 96 inch beam, sea deck flooring, rated for a 250 Yamaha show, or you can get that X19, if you don't want the 21, maybe it don't fit in your garage, the X19 is perfect, or maybe, or maybe you're just like, well, I don't even want a bass boat. Their bay boats, one of the highest rated in the country. If you're around that salt area, those center consoles, those X bays, bad to the bone. They got a boat for every situation. Express boats, the official boat of low budget life and the traveling circus. And I cannot wait to get my new one. So many of y'all reaching out about the current X21 Pro I have, and it will be for sale very, very soon within the next couple of weeks and will be available to put in your garage probably around like June 1st. That's what we're looking at, June 1st, about a month, a little over a month. Express Boats, building excitement since 1966. All right, all right. Got all the uh, the rambling out of the way there. Whew. Whew, I'm brain dead. I'm brain dead, man. So brain dead. MPFL is amazing. Like I said, really cool week for a lot of reasons. And, uh, and, and we're going to have the winner of the event on. I always like to do that after the after the league events. And we have a unique situation in the league this year where, you know, last year obviously it was kind of crazy how the year ended and all that. And uh, But we've had some people join us this year, veteran 
pros. And what I mean by that is, you know, we got a lot of veteran anglers in our in our trail, but we got guys like Patrick Walters and Brad Knight, Daryl Davis, Jason Williamson joining us this year, Quentin Capo, some of these guys that, that have been out here at, at that highest level for a while now. And, I mean, to, to join the likes of the, the John Sokups and Keith Carsons and Bryant Smiths and Taylor Watkins, and, and I'm leaving out a ton, Buck Mallory's from last year. And, uh, you know, we, we are starting to learn more and more about our field as we go along, who, who the hammers are, who the check getters are, who's good at this technique, who's great at this technique. And, and this week was really special because we got to see – unfortunately, we were, we were right on top of a, a MLFLW uh, RIP Forcewood Cup pro circuit event on Pickwick. And guys like Brad Knight and Daryl Davis and Keith Carson elected to go to that event versus the MPFL because we don't have a championship, right? We don't have a championship. AOI does pay very well, the progressive AOI – this year, but we don't have that year in championship, and obviously the Pro Circuit has the title championship, which pays a good chunk of change. So I don't blame those guys for going that route this week, but had a scheduling conflict. The only one we got all year, and it was this week. Um, in one of our best events, for sure. Fish laying everywhere on bed, and it, it was it was crazy to see. But, but we still, uh, at Cherokee, excuse me, back up, Cumberland, our first event, weather-shortened event, Patrick Walters was there. But he had to leave for Bassmaster Classic practice. So this was one I kind of had circled. It's going to be interesting to see. He's fantastic on Hartwell. He has several wins there, so much experience there. He gets it. He's dialed. And he was a guy that, I mean, obviously, I feel like if you pay any attention to the fishing board, you were like, this is his to win the time of year. He knows the drill. He's been on a roll. And he knows how to close, Right. So we were all kind of, you know, looking forward to the week. And then and then day one, they just smash on them. Like it, the weights were crazy way down into the field. And Patrick catches like a, you know, just a whatever bag, 14 pounds, and he's buried down there. And we had the conversation on live, can a guy come from 30th and take this because the weights were so tight? You know, even with a high 14s bag, he wasn't very far out of the top 10. Stacked up. We actually had a tie for first place between Brandon Perkins and Buck Mallory the first day. Co-leaders. Second day, Walters drops a bag. 19-6. Biggest bag of the event. Takes over the lead by six ounces. Going into the showdown Saturday, the final day. And so it's like, uh uh-oh. Here we go. He's doing what he does. He's out there chasing these herring fish. He's catching some betters. And he was super confident, he was super calm. But but for me, it was very cool because we got to cover Patrick, watch him on Hartwell breaking it down. Um, and and I, I always like Patrick on live when I've watched him on, on Bass Live and things. He's always really good about breaking down what he's doing. So I was really looking forward to getting to cover him, and, and it was a great day. But early, early in the day, and I, and I want to tell a quick story before we call this guy, before we call our guest is on day two, so let me back up a day. So on day two, we send our cameras out there. We don't have live coverage on day one. We go day two, day three. So day two, the man we're going to talk to is in fifth place. He's in fifth place. Gets a camera. He rolls out. Slow-ish morning. Not, not. Terribly slow. He's sight fishing. Sight fishing. He told me the night before, he said, dude, all I'm doing is looking at him. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to bed fish until it's time to go back to Ohio. That's all I'm going to do. I got one little bait that's working. Sends me a picture of said bait. He's like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm using light line to trick these bad boys. And he caught 17 pounds the first day. And he said, I think I got more coming, blah, blah, blah. All right. So early on day two, not really struggling. He's just got like two or three fish early. We make a decision, and I say we, production team, they move a camera. They go get his camera to move it to another angler that's that's moving up the leaderboard. Well, he just shows us because he catches over 14 pounds to be in the mix going into the final day. Pound 10 ounces off the lead. Drew six. So, 
he's giving us a hard time on stage, and we we felt silly about it. We're like, "Dag gum it!" Of course, he called him, and he's in the mix. The guy we moved the camera to, Jesse Wise, also fantastic event, and called him as well. Once we got in the boat with him, so all was well. But we missed Drew catching his big ones in the afternoon. So Patrick takes the lead. The dust settles. We got our top five. We go out yesterday morning, showdown Saturday. And Drew (laughs) pulls into his first area, and all of a sudden there's just big ones laying everywhere that weren't there the day before. And he picks off one almost six pounds. It was insane. And if you've kept up with professional bass fishing as much as I have, and I know so many of you do, and you've kept up with tournaments. I'm a tournament junkie. I love competing in tournaments. I love every detail about tournaments, how they catch them, how they didn't catch them, who sucked, who was great, what patterns prevail. I love all that. That's why I love getting to be on MPFL Live. Love it. And I get to get in these guys' heads. I get to watch them. I got all the cameras in front of me. I mean, I'm a, I'm, I'm a junkie. Love it. And you, when it's your time, you can see it. And man, it was like David versus Goliath, and Drew didn't even care that Goliath was in the field. And what I mean by that is Patrick is a closer, Patrick had the lead, and Patrick had the most ace, you know, ace cards in the hole, in my opinion, going into the afternoon hours. We cut off live coverage at two, but Drew smashing on live. Ends up dropping a bag over 19 pounds and and not only wins, but beats the brakes off of the field. Beats the brakes. Let, let me just see here. Let me just one more time look at this leaderboard. This, because this was, this was awesome. Yeah. Almost five freaking pounds beats the brakes off of the field. Drew six. Impressive, man. So impressive. So we're going to call Drew. We're going to get him on the phone. Lots to learn about this guy. He is, uh, and we're going to get into it here. He is, he's a special human being for a lot of reasons, for a lot of reasons. And I think that good things happen to good people. And he had a very special week. He's a great angler and uh, was deserving of this win, to say the very least. We're going to get him on the phone right now. Ohio's Drew Six. Headed back home right now. What if he just sends us the voicemail after all that? What's up, Luke? Drew Six. How are you, buddy? Good, man. Driving down the road. Just about to get to Charlotte. Back back to reality, right? I'm not back to reality yet, man. <laughs> but, uh, we're not going to be there probably until Wednesday or Thursday. Okay. Okay, so, so so after after Brandon Perkins won last year, we did a show, and I, I think that in all professional fishing, it's taken for granted that most guys, other than maybe, I'll throw like 20, 25 guys out there in the entire sport, you know, they've got other things going on in life other than just, hey, I go bass fishing every day, and you're one of those guys. And now you've got, and a lot of our MPFL anglers are that way. I said that at Cumberland when it was a weather shortened event. Guys couldn't hang around till Sunday or Monday to postpone it because they got they got real lives, just like I do. I do the commentary. I come back home. I go to work. You run your own business, and and you said last night, man, I got to get back after. I got to get back on the road. Very cool to me. Yeah. Um. Sorry, I was I was just listening. No, no, you're um, good. Yeah, man. It's like every time. So when I leave, I try to plan for the worst, right? Trying to have all my ducks in a row, yeah. all my T's dotted and my I's crossed, right? Yeah. I always do it backwards because uh, everyone freaks out and I do stuff like that. But <laughs> um, I, I, I make sure everything's perfect. And then like it'll slowly start rolling downhill and the snowball gets big right <laughs> so monday i have a little and it's all customers i love customers obviously i couldn't do what i do without them but customers when you have customers you also have to provide a service of uh communication mm-hmm. um if there's a problem every every business every job every category whether you're making mulch digging dirt building houses or 
whatever, making dog food, there's always an issue. Mm -hmm. And someone has to be there for the collateral damage. Well, guess who has to be there for the collateral damages? That's me. Uh, I like to be, um, people call me a narcissist, control freak, (laughs) whatever you want to call me. OCD, maybe a little bit. (laughs) I'm not OCD. Maybe Kelsey's here with us too. Uh, she might, I don't know if I'm OCD. I'm just really particular how I want things handled. Nothing wrong um, with that. You know, if there's a problem, I don't want the middleman to take care of it because I don't know what was said because my name's on the building that ought to lay at the end of the day. So, right on. It, it, you know. Is it, does it provide, because I know for me when I was fishing FLW especially and I got the TH Marine job going on, you're never off. And you owning your own business, you're never off like that. I mean, do you, are you able to shut it off during those competition hours just between the oh, years? Oh, gosh. No. No, it's a body <laughs> shot. It's a body shot, man. It never stops. Um, and, and No, it never stops. And we have a big niche. We do bass boats. So we're big in poly flake bass boats. Uh, okay. So wintertime, we get work. Summertime is even more stressful because guys want their boats. Um. So it's, it, 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 I don't want to shut it down. I don't ever want to shut it down. Right. You know, but I do have a couple, I have a decent crew, um, back home. They, they, uh, I feel bad when I leave them, you know, cause they'll text me like, Hey, you know, this is happening. I know you're on the water. Just let us know. And you take care of it at the end of the day. It's like, man, these guys are sitting there busting their asses. And I'm out here just laying the six pound test around. I was gonna say you're busting largemouth in the face with six pound line, buddy. <laughs> That's what you were doing. They're busting ass. That's you're that. busting those faces. We saw it so many times, <laughs> dude. Uh, and you called me last night. You were like, "Man, I had you guys freaked out on that six pound line." Sounds like on live. And and dude, you were just such a pro with it. You never lost your cool. You were you lost some fish. You just kind of like gather yourself get right back after it and and i said before i called you keeping up with professional bass fishing as long as i have since a kid i'm I'm obsessed with it i love the details i love how tournaments work out i'm a fan of the sport and then i've been fortunate enough to be involved in the sport like i have as well and it's you see those days you see the day when the guy has the perfect final day and nothing can go wrong and about 11 o'clock yesterday, in my mind, I didn't say it out loud. In fact, Cat eventually did before we went off live. But, dude, it was very clear you were having that day because we're watching guys like Perkins, who was in second. You were pounding 10 ounces off the lead coming in. You were right there. But we're watching Perkins spin out. We're watching Mike Corbishley spin out. There's people on all their stuff. We're watching Walters pull up, and there's people on his stuff. And, and I kept saying, it was like you were on a different lake. You're like, oh, there's another one. Power pull down. Dink. Drag goes to singing. Scoop them up, put them in a boat. And every time you'd make a call, I'm like, we'd, we'd go to commercial and I'd be like, fat cat. Dude, he don't have any little ones left. <laughs> like, he's, like he, they're all good ones. <laughs> that, I was getting frustrated. And like, I was talking to Buck Mallory at, just a little bit ago. And I tell him, I was like, Buck, at 2 o'clock, man, emotionally, mentally, physically, man, I'm like, I'm done. I, I can't, like, I'm done. My hands hurt. Everything's done. You know what I mean? It's a long Every, week. Boat's yeah. Getting, my boat's starting to droop down. My boat's like, man, I'm tired. Can You're battered. Back? Yeah. And I'm, <laughs> I'm like, no, no, we got a jump box. We're okay. So I uh, I called a couple more times after we got off the air, though. I, I was having a real difficult time. There were so many fish. I could just see so many fish and they were so active. There were a couple times I was just like, Hey, watch this. I would just cast in and catch it. Like I knew it wasn't. Wouldn't even help knew, you. Yeah. <laughs> I, but it was just fun. <laughs> Absolutely. We said that a couple times. We're like, look, Drew's just taunting everybody at this point. Like he's just, Oh, there's another one. It won't help me. Think called it. Uh, talk about that setup, man, because it, I'm so happy that it worked out for you for so many different reasons. But I, so I, I'm on the behind the scenes stuff, and I, I get to bug you guys. You get off the weight, you know, you get off stage, you weigh in your 17 pounds, you're in the top five the first day, so you're going to get a camera for day two. So I, I do my homework. You and I talked, and you were out of all the anglers I talked to, you were the most excited, you were the most locked in on what you were going to do, no matter what, come hell or high water, you were going to bed fish. 
and you were going to do it with basically one thing. You sent me a picture of it because I said, well, I won't blow your details up on day two. You say, hey, man, look, I don't think anybody else is going to do what I'm doing. They're not going to throw this thing. Is that something you, – you've got this Ohio uh, background, obviously, smallmouth guy. That's what you told me last night. You're like, six-pound line doesn't bug me. Dude, I catch big smallmouth all the time. What's a three-pound largemouth? Where did that, that Z-man bait – and that head style, is that something you use for smallmouth a lot that you just adapted to those largemouth at Hartwell? So, so that jerk Z um, or jerk shad, they got a couple different profiles or categories that you can call it because they send them that they don't unsend them. It is what it is, right? So yeah. It's a little it's like, minnow style. Like so a 375, 3.75 inch. 375. Yeah. Um, on Erie, I use fours, fives, and sevens. Um, so that is actually a new size for 2022 that Z-Man came out with. So I was like, oh, I gotta get a bunch of these. So then I actually stole the idea. Um, Z-Man, Z-Man likes to put out a bunch of pro tips. They, they always run good tips, tutorials. I don't know if you follow much about Z-Man. Oh yeah, great man, stuff. Top, top notch company on the top, right? Oh, for sure. I mean, from A, a to Z, um, I saw the picture somewhere from someone doing some winter bassing with a similar setup. And I'm like, man, you know what? That's got an eighth ounce head and you can get them down to like 164s, 132nds. I might be off on my numbers a little bit, but you get the gist of it. Um, I was like, man, that'd be a perfect deal because that Z-Man floats. It's real buoyant. Mm -hmm. So I was like, that looks like a bluegill feeding on their eggs. Yeah. So then I tipped the tail in blue. Well, we're on a blue heron lake, yeah. right? Yeah. Blue's my favorite color. I mean, that was obvious. <laughs> just, just made, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I, I tipped that tail, man. That made all the difference, so man, because they would come up to that tail and just be like, you bastard, you're in my nest. And they would just swipe it up. It, um, I, I noticed with that head, it's got big eyes on it as well. And I, yeah, that, you know, bluegill got big eyes. That's too. right. And what I was going to say about that, and this is something that I've believed in for a lot of years that I've kind of kept, I mean, you know, to myself as far as bed fishing, I believe in throwing baits with eyes. Like I've added eyes to soft plastics. I, I really do believe it makes a difference. I really do during the spawn. When they're getting that up close yeah. and personal look, I just th I think it does make a difference at times. I really do. And I know that's one of yeah, the first things that jumped out at me at that little rig you were throwing. Yeah, and and the and honestly, the profile and the and the uh, action and the the mimicking of the bluegill. The biggest thing was line, man. You know, and I gotta step back. Danny Weems and I are travel partners. Mm -hmm. uh, we started at the end, uh, middle of last year. Great guy. We have started to. These lakes are huge, right? This is no secret. Him and I practice together, not in the same boat. But breaking but it down. We, we're breaking it down together, man. I mean, we are on this trust level of even showing our waypoints together. It's awesome. But we're, we're marking them separately. And, you know, and Danny's, I missed Sunday. So Monday I had to go out fresh. Um, so we went out. Mark's bed, he, he marks some offshore stuff and he could not build off the, the bed thing. So he said, Hey man, go do your thing. Right. But I noticed that the line that the dropping down the six pound test, it was crazy. Cause when I started using heavier line, the line is what scared them. It wasn't the bait. It was the line. And they can and feel I that. Know. Yeah. I they think can they feel see it. In the water, it. You know, they can see it. They can feel it. Yeah. I think it, the bigger line definitely just dis displaces more water at times when you're bringing it. Pa you, know, you try to throw past the bed and bring it to them. Yeah. I, I, I'm with you. It, well, and sometimes uh, bringing it past the bed didn't work. In the bed, it was like, I got to, like, you could see me out there, man. I was trying to, like, be one with the bed. <laughs> For sure. And, uh, you were, man. Like, there were times I would just sit there and just look at the fish. Yeah, we just saw see. that a lot. Yeah, you're analyzing. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a really high-strung person, but the the bed fishing, man, it was just like, this is fun. Like, I was... 
Are you- There's certain stuff that interests me, like card games. Like if you put a card game in front of me, let's just let's just skip the card game and drink beer. Like I can't do it. <laughs> I, I would like go look for nuts in the trees or something with this world. But for some reason, it. the bed fishing, man, I was dialed. Even during practice, I never got bored looking for beds. Never. Never once did I get bored. How many did you mark coming out of practice? Because this I is a number we... 98 waypoints. 98. 398. 398. Because we were saying 400 on live, and people were commenting, like, whatever. I'm like, man, I'm just telling you, it was close to 400. I, I can I can show you the number. I mean, there's no secret. It, 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 and some of those... And yeah, remember, some of those numbers are skewed also because if I saw a fish cruise in that area, of course. I marked it as a bed. Of course. So if I saw four fish, there was four marks. Of course. Um, but it, it was, ironically enough, I had never, ever lo- looked at the area I was in yesterday. Uh, Wednesday and, I'm sorry, Thursday and Friday, I, I totally hammered the areas that I was in during practice for two days. I mean, I have... I went in every cut pocket piece of wood. Um, and then on uh, game day Saturday, you know, yesterday morning, I looked at my, my Loran C map and I'm looking for those. I, I'm in secondary creeks with primary creeks, right? So we're going, we're going back deeper, okay. but the secondary Creek had to make a deep cut down the middle of that. I call it the primary, you know, the mm-hmm. third creek of the of the lake i mean you're talking 20 foot sections you could tell i wasn't in very big areas no small small pockets for sure for sure yes small very small but very deep so when i was sitting in those deep pockets they were 16 to 20 foot deep okay but there would be a super sharp point and those were those that was the key to finding those bass i like i could tell you right now like there was one pocket man they were just like it's like a machine gun went off i'm like these fish ain't gonna help me. They're all three pounders. Unbelievable. It was. It was just. But I also went out past small limit yesterday morning. Too. Quick. I didn't know yes. If you yes, that. we did. Yes, and and it was before we even got on live. Before we got the cameras up and rolling. Yeah. You had a you had a limit in the box fast. You were on top of that unofficial leaderboard the second we went live. You had you had already taken the lead and you never turned loose of it. <laughs> you were like, no boys, <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> This is yeah, my dude. It was it was inc- it was incredible. I mean, just the amount of fish. Even uh, on Friday, I I actually, you know, everyone keeps saying that I started slow. Uh, I didn't actually start slow. I had a limit by nine o'clock on Saturday. On on Friday. On Friday. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I was I was not starting slow. Um. I just I didn't update my weights. I was just focused on trying in, yeah. yeah, I was locked in, man, because on those long I knew come Saturday we got a high school tournament, which they don't have any rules, right? I mean they got rules, but they're everywhere though. Three, yeah. Yeah, they're every they're everywhere. You got locals, you got tritunes, pontoons, you got cruisers. I'm like, these offshore guys don't have a chance come Saturday, that, man. Like Yeah. That's how I mean. it ain't gonna it ain't gonna happen. I, I hate to say it, but I I know how high pressure fish act when there's boat traffic, especially in that clear and water. Boat. And they were already spooky on those points. Yeah, very yeah, spooky. They were real spooky. And the shad spawn has not taken off yet. No, not at all. When the when the stripers are still out in almost a hundred foot of water, that's just a normal day of eating for them fish. Still, that's right. man. That's. You know, so I I just I don't know. I just it wasn't I didn't want to update my weights, but I just I was focused on finding a couple bigger bites to get up. There. And, and I, I told the story before I called you about uh, I'm not going to say any names, but production Brad Fuller uh, <laughs> making the decision to move yeah, the well, camera. Don't, don't mention Brad Fuller's name. Don't mention Brad I mean, Fuller's name at all. It was definitely not Brad's decision. <laughs> No, it's all right. it, okay, it, you know what? It, it, if that was part of how the stars lined up, it was I, man. I, it, it it added to the I story so much. Brad yeah, pulling the camera. Yeah, listen, we've given him a lot of crap over that in two days. Trust <laughs> me, uh, he don't care. He don't, he don't care. care. Brad can take it as good as anybody can take it. He can dish it out and he can Can't take it. Any though? I don't. I think so. Yeah, I think he can handle it. 
I think he can. I think he. Well, I'll put it this way. I think he can handle what we throw at him. He might not be able to handle what Drew Six throws at him. I don't know. (laughs) Brad and I have had some heated conversations, but he's he's. uh, Brad, Brad's a good one, man. He, he's he's a great yeah, one. Brad's a good dude. They're yeah. all good dude. Brad. Uh, it's all it's a family. Um, yeah, I was on our website. I saw them all gather around, take a picture with you and your and your and your lovely bride there. And I was like, man, this is what this is about. It it is a brotherhood. I heard Patrick Walters say that on stage. And Patrick, you know, fishing the Elite Series, he's been around. He's a young man, but he's he's got big time tournament experience. And he said that on stage. He said, man, I always heard, because he, he had to miss our first event there at Cumberland. And he said, uh, you know, I'd heard this league was like a brotherhood, and it, and it is. He said, man, it, it feels so good. Everybody's so, you know, gets along. It's not cutthroat. And that's what I, I wanted to bring up next. There's something about you that I feel like, as, as everybody's getting to know you, man, the number one thing I hear about Drew Six, and now for the rest of the year and for the rest of your life, you're going to be MPFL champion, Drew Six. That came to Lake Hartwell and kicked those large mouths right in the teeth with that six pound line forever. But all I hear about Drew Six last year and this year, you help people. You put people ahead of yourself. You own your own business. Yes, you do a lot of fiberglass work. But man, I've heard more. Hey, I had a trolling motor issue and Drew, yeah, Drew Six, man, my motor was active because because we are in the league other than power pole and huge shout out to power pole they've been to yeah, they multiple this week. yes they've they've been at multiple events but we don't have we don't have service crews we don't have that industry support that other trails do at this current moment and man i hear i hear your name more from guys drew took care of the, yeah drew 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 and man i, I just i just want to applaud you for that publicly you don't strike me as a guy. You don't do it for credit. Like you like helping people. You like helping your fellow fishermen and dude. That that's just freaking awesome, man. So that just the win aside, that's that. I I feel like I I don't know a ton about you, but I know enough just with those stories. Like you, you're a good man, Drew Six. Appreciate that, man. It, it's awesome to hear, man. And I think that's a very. I think you combined with the other 116 guys, like that is a great representation of this league right like it's people help everybody's kind of we all came into it last year with a little bit of a chip on our shoulder from the host to the anglers because we felt like we were you know the industry didn't really wrap its arms around us to the to a full uh, you know extent and and it's just it's really cool what we're doing in the league i feel like from the anglers Absolutely. to the production to the owners like it's just a I don't know, man. I'm real proud to be a part of it. Proud to get to know guys like you, and proud to see you hoist that trophy. Uh, it's it's awesome, man. You know, I was looking. Uh, had a rough start at Cumberland, which a lot of guys did. It was easy to have a rough start at Cumberland. <laughs> Cumberland was was evil, but now with this win, it's gonna it's gonna flip flop a rough start, dude. You know, you get past Watts Bar. We're headed up your way. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, I mean, are we going to see one of those two-time Drew Six two-time MPFL champions this year? Look, man, uh, good friend from Ohio, Chris King, taught me years ago. Don't ever boast, right? Right. Don't ever, don't ever. I've done it. We've all done it, right? We've always won practice. Everybody wins. <laughs> Everybody, that's you know, right. Especially with social media, over. everybody's winning. <laughs> Yeah, everyone's winning, or everybody wins with their invisible. I lost five five pounders. Of course, pounders. broken line and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, broken line. <laughs> I got news for you. I boat flipped four pounder with a six pounder. We, your line. We saw it. <laughs> Seaguar tap too. But um, I, I don't want to boast. There, there's a few guys. There's a lot of guys, and I'm not downplaying any of the the other field. I'm talking about guys that I know in the region that will come out there and hammer them because great lakes is a very unique facility. Totally different deal. Um, yep. You, you know that. And I'll actually be throwing four pound line up there. Wow. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. And I'll maybe explain that later on down the road. Yeah. Don't give that up yet. <laughs> Save that juice. <laughs> but, uh, I, I know the upper part of Michigan, I'll struggle just a little bit, not a lot, but the, the latter of that, the Ohio event. Um, like I said, I don't want to say anything. 
Obviously, it, it, it plays a little bit in my backyard. You got it circled on the calendar. Let's just put it that way. You you were pumped to see the league coming there, buddy. Come on, you can say that. You can say yeah, that. Yeah, I'm 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 a little pumped, <laughs> but I'm also a little nervous. Also, I get that uh, home lake advantage. There's a little more. Yeah. Wow, there's a home lake disadvantage. That's right. Also. Pressure. That's, yeah, man. Well, you you'll get to sleep in your own bed for that one, correct? You'll be uh, close. Yeah, it's an hour and fifteen, okay. so I'll be going home home every night. That's um, awesome. During the tournament, I will stay up there because okay. uh, believe it or not, it's so weird, man. I get up at two o'clock in the morning on tournament days. I wake Jeez. up at two o'clock. Two o'clock. Um, I'm like, woo, time to go. Now is that your then, is uh, that your marine background in that? <laughs> Kelsey, do I get up at two o'clock at home? <laughs> no, man. I love it, Kelsey. Thank I, you for that. <laughs> He's like, no, he doesn't. He doesn't get out of bed. <laughs> bonus time. Yeah, she calls it bonus time when I wake up early. That's her time. I love it. But uh, she, uh, no, we get up around six ish, talk for a half hour, fight a little bit, and then we go about our day That's around right. seven. That sounds like here uh, at the no, Duncan I House. Don't, <laughs> I don't. I don't know why I get up, man. I just it's fired up like, this morning. Yeah, this morning I was up four o'clock. Boom, let's go. But I know when I get home, man, I'm gonna be like, "Yep, yeah, we're back to it." Seven o'clock sounds good. Yeah, I think that you know when you leave a tournament week, I always say that even doing the coverage, we we're on one, man, with the adrenaline. And like yesterday with you, you were having so much fun, and we were feeding off that energy. And we had, I, I think, it was our best show. In two years, yesterday, I, I, I no, there's that. no way. No, it was man. It was great. Like your energy, like it was just everything was smooth, uh, production wise. Like it was. We were talking about it last night. Like it was. It was my favorite. Uh, it might, hey, to the public, it might not have been. I don't know, but for me, it was our favorite. My favorite day of coverage we've had. Fat Cat said the same. You were just feeling it so much, uh, and it was slow. I will say that. Like overall, fish catch wise, for the other guys we were covering, but dude, you were just electric. And how excited you were! You could feed off that energy, and it and it was cool. But uh, what I'm getting at is though that adrenaline, man. You're so locked in in tournament mode and practice mode. And for me, I'm good, and I run on that adrenaline until I get to the house in Tennessee, and then it all just goes boop <laughs> at the end of a week. Whether I'm covering an event, fishing an event, so yeah, I'd say when you get back home, you're going to be. Uh, it's all going to hit you like really sink in. And that energy is going to kind of slide out, maybe <laughs> for a couple of days. I, hope not. I mean, I got I got Watts Bar. I got to lead it into which that'll it's be good. an interesting event. Should be man. Should be a good one though. I, I'm excited that that we're going there. I've only fished there a couple times, but um, I'm proud that the league is they that we do showcase different lakes than a lot of trails do. So I, I think we're going to be pleasantly surprised at how that one goes overall. For everybody, yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be sitting offshore in that event. So. Yeah, I think that that's going to be a good old Tennessee River tournament, to say the least. Uh, you know, you guys, we we kind of threw you guys a curve by going to Pickwick in July last year. It was a good event, but it was it was tough. You guys are going to have fun at Watts Bar. Yeah, I would say it's going to be hot too. <laughs> yeah, well, finally, you know, man, we had we had nights in the in the low thirties last week here. Finally kind of making that turn. It's going to be in the 80s this week. So finally starting to kind of get in our normal May weather. Yeah, we're going to get caught up a little bit. But, I mean, water temperature was in the low 60s just last week around around these parts. So, And that's rare for us now. Our fish are normally really close to being finished with the spawn by now. And, man, it's still a full bore around here. Kind of like Hartwell. You know, you guys, that was another thing that we said on live a lot. The delayed spring really helped our event. Because so many fish were still spawning, and they do spawn into late April over there. Don't get me wrong, but the Bassmaster Classic was there a little over a month ago, and there were fish on the bed then. So we really caught a break with it. it just you know, like you said, all the stars lining up, full moon, delayed spring, cold nights, and man, it just kept those big ones coming to Drew Six. I thought, <laughs> I thought, yeah, but I thought you guys said the spawn was over. I did. Hey, listen, buddy, let me just tell you. You go back and watch it. We said, because you told me, hey, man, I found 400, got all these fish found, and then from the guys we watched, it's like, ooh, there's a lot of empty beds. There's not as many spawners. And then you proved us wrong. You're like, hey, more may come. And you told me that Thursday night. 
And so Fat Cat, his exact quote was, hey, we're going to go to dinner and we're going to have a big buffet of crow tonight, <laughs> Luke and I, because we don't know what we're talking about. So we were glad you yeah. proved us wrong on live yesterday, to say the very least. <laughs> but yeah, we did it call it. It did have a feeling like it was going away, though. Loaded up yesterday. Yeah, if man. I, if I would have had another four-day tournament, if it was a, like a four-day tournament, I would have been just whacking them again, probably. Unbelievable. Were you still seeing like fresh ones move in yesterday afternoon? Uh, dude, uh, so I went to a creek. So I got closer to the boat ramp. Um, obviously had a battery uh, issue. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to quote somebody from last year. Um, and I, I'm saying this with all respect to Brandon Perkins, uh, <laughs> but you don't want to break down when you're far away with a good bag. That's right. And I, was, and I, and I, and you made a comment to me about calculating the trolling motor last night. Yep. That calculation is running through my head all day. Mm hmm. I, I know the limits of my boat. I know the limits of my fuel. I know the limits of my batteries. Like you guys were spazzing about batteries. I had two spare lithiums behind the passenger <laughs> seat. I had a jump pack behind the driver's so seat. So awesome. And, Prepared. And I could I could parallel all my trolling motor batteries. I'll get that motor started. You weren't I'll worried hand about crank it. it if I have to. Yeah. I'm I'm not worried about it. But I I was prepared. So anyways, so I got back. To, to the boat ramp area, I went, uh, I went I went ahead of the boat ramp and went down a creek, caught up, and found about 25 more beds back there. Jeez. And they were just sitting on the beds. But I'm also looking uh, – oh, so, Bert, you ever heard of Burt Mullet? Yeah, uh, of course. Okay, so Burt, Burt Mullet's a very deep spawn lake for spawn mm -hmm. out. Um, the big ones come out 20 foot of water. The two and a half, three and a half come in, yeah, 12 to 16. You got a flog for them. Mm -hmm. So I was looking in that six to 10 foot range for those large mouths. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of guys, what I could see on the banks, those guys were just way too tight, man. They're just so tight. Up in the dirt, yeah. They're up in the dirt, making the dirt, moving the water <laughs> yes. around, chasing the fish around them. They're like, the fish ran away. It's like, well, dude, your prop was busting its ass. <laughs> That's right. Like, it had a Minn Kota against this? its gill plate. <laughs> well, we have ghost around. Yes, I, and I'm a Garmin guy. I shouldn't even have said that. <laughs> yeah, so you're a forest guy. Forest guy, guy you're guy. a ghost guy. I don't, I don't want a T-Rex on the front of my boat. I'm good. <laughs> um, but, I, dude, I just, I, I was able to look at that C-Map reveal I don't know if you ever looked at CMAP reveal, but it, 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 like you could do your filters and shadings and all that stuff. Dude, it, it was just like, I put, I put in my adjustments. I tuned to Lawrence and I hit go and it showed every pocket, how I wanted it to set up. That's awesome. In man. My head. And, and I was like, okay, let's go there. So I'll you're basically calling your day. shots at, at that point. I call, I, I called my shots yesterday. That's awesome, man. That gives me chills. And that's, I mean, it was just incredible. And then around that noon time frame, I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to call these fish out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what, that's something else we talked about on live is, you know, man, he's getting in that weight category where he's got to find some real big ones to call some of these smaller fish yeah. he's got. Yeah. And, and, and an 18 pound bag, which I had 19 one. Right. right. Yeah. The 19 -1 bag down there is a good That's bag. a big stringer on Harwell, I mean, yes. No matter the time yeah, of year. I mean, like, 22-pound bags are about as big as you ever hear of, even in the pre-spawn on Hartwell. So, yeah. Yeah, was, but we're talking a three-day tournament. Of course, yeah. After they've been beat on, 116 guys have gone round and round. No, to catch that on the final day, save your best for last, it's incredible, man. My hat's off to, like, it's an incredible event. Like, well-played, sticking to your guns. Ignoring the fact that Fat Cat and I don't know what we're talking about, and <laughs> just catching them, man, it was it was a pleasure to watch you. I'm super proud for you, dude. And uh, hell, I hope we see you get to lift another one of those shields this year. I'm I'm going to work pretty hard at working towards three of them. Um, I'll settle for two. Okay. <laughs> if I don't, if yeah. I don't get two, I'll, I'll take the one. I'm All just, right. I, it, my mom always said it's okay to eat humble pie. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if you win another one or two, you're, you're okay with that too. You'll still be humble. 
uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Drew Six, I appreciate you taking the time out to do this, man, this morning. Uh, congratulations to you and your family. You're a good man. You're a great angler, and uh, proud I got to be a part of it, man. Yeah, Luke, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks to everybody. The family came down. My dad was there. My uncle was there. She's here. She's still here. Um, I think she's crying still, but uh, <laughs> we got tissues. Great Lakes Yurt Company, stood, I mean, they were, they were just – Watching it from day one, they they get me down here, they get me back home. You know, the big ones, Lawrence, Mercury. Shout out to Z-Man at Rock and Roll, man. See you at Watch Bar. Yes, sir. Drew Six, everybody. Thank you, Drew. Have a good day, buddy. You too. Drew Six. It's an awesome individual, man. He is – Drew was a, was a Marine for several years. He's got a really cool background and, and something I didn't touch on there. I talked to Drew first day of the tournament, and he, he mentioned it, just, just mentioned it there. Our first day of practice happened to, to, to coincide with Easter. It was on Easter Sunday. They had a church service down at the ramp for a lot of our anglers, but some of our anglers elected not to, not to practice on Sunday, and I, I have immense respect for that. They spent time with their families, and Drew stayed home with his family on Easter Sunday, made the sacrifice one day of practice, two days of practice, 398 bed and fish, which a lot of them got caught. A lot of them got, were gone, finds new fish. You hear him, he had those, had his, had his Lawrence map dialed in. Listen, he used one bait, one rod Todd all week. Incredible performance. Drew Six, your stop number two NPFL champion. It's cool, man. Good man right there make sure you're following i think it's six angling on instagram drew six want to say uh a huge congrats to everybody that made the top 10 at the pro circuit it's going on right now i'm recording this in the middle of the day so no clue who's going to win down there on my home lake pickwick but my buddy bk brad knight had a big event was able to jump back up there i think finished like 15th but andrew loberg made the final day there justin lucas john canada too many folks to name there but uh Going to be an interesting one to see how that shakes out. We'll try to get the winner of that on next week's show. Appreciate each and every one of you listening to my rambling, to my insanity. Appreciate y'all tuning in to MPFL Live. Again, I'm grateful for the opportunity. I love what I get to do there. It's a lot of fun for me. And um, I'm proud to get to, you know, to be a part of these guys' stories and, and watch it all go down from behind the scenes and be a small part of of what that league is trying to accomplish. It's uh, it's an honor, man. It's an honor. But we'll take y'all out with some Biloxi Blues. We'll see y'all next week for some more LBL. Be sure to hug your mama. I'll see y'all next Monday. From Jackson Town to Tupelo I never could make it last Spanish Moss and Civil War Ghosts Well, I'm gonna leave them in the past Any direction, Lord, I be fine, it don't matter east or west North, south, wherever the wind blows, I'm leaving those burdens at rest This highway, it does not know my name and I don't care, no I don't care Heading my way for another place and I got Tires and a spare Just a white line gypsy Getting out of Mississippi With just enough gas to get there